I've got lots of different colors in my paint box and more than half of them I don't even use. So to demonstrate that you don't need a lot of colors when you first start painting, I've painted this goose where I've used three primary colors only. Artist quality watercolor paints are expensive and I have wasted so much money over the years on colors that I rarely, if ever, use. They sit in these boxes and hardly get touched. So today I want to show you how I painted this goose using three primary colors and this black waterproof pen for the eye. Grey is the main colour I used on the goose and greys can be a bit bland and unexciting so I like to mix my own. I can adjust the colour and make it warmer with warm colours or cooler with blues and purples. And then when it dries sometimes the colours will separate slightly and create some beautiful effects on the paper. When you mix grey, experiment and try mixing different complementary colours to make it. If you've done any of my tutorials, you'll know that I often use burnt sienna mixed with French ultramarine. For this painting, I mixed these three primary colours to make the grey. I thought I'd stick to using these three colours to help with the colour harmony of the painting. Watercolour is a perfect medium to show light and shade and the beautiful luminosity of watercolour paintings is evident when you allow the white of the paper to show through the pigment. So for this painting I wanted to paint it fairly quickly with minimal fuss and very few layers of paint in order to allow the paper to show through. So let's have a look. On my palette here I've got three primary colours. I've got French Ultramarine, Alizarin Crimson and Indian Yellow and these are all Winsor & Newton paints. I'm going to mix some of the Alizarin Crimson with the Indian Yellow to make an orange and I'll use that colour on the beak and on the legs. So that gives me a vibrant orange that I can use. I've mixed another batch of orange here and I'm going to add some French ultramarine to it to make a grey. So now I've got some French ultramarine in there and I keep playing with the colours until I get a colour that I like. So I'll see what this looks like on the paper and then I can adjust the temperature of it. So if I want it warmer I can put more of the orange in it or if I want it cooler I'll just add more French Ultramarine. So I think I'd like it to be a bit cooler so I'll put some more blue in there. So I'm happy with that. I also want some French Ultramarine on its own so that I can paint the background on. So I'll mix a bit of water with it and get it ready for the background. I've drawn my goose onto a piece of Fabriano Artistico cold pressed paper. This is A3 size which is 11.7 inches by 16.5 inches. I've got a Da Vinci mop brush here and I'm going to use it to dampen the paper around the edge of the goose with some water. I want to paint the background on damp paper, mainly around the bird. The dampness of the paper will give me a bit more time to get the colour on around the edges of the goose. Because the feathers are white, I have to leave the white of the paper showing, so the background will form the shape of the bird. And this water will give me a bit more time to make sure I get that shape painted in correctly. This is my reference photo that I'm using. I took this photo years ago in a park in Sydney. 
Now I'll use the French Ultramarine to form the edge of the bird. I've picked up a bit more paint and I can come back and reinforce that edge and I'll push the paint off onto the dry paper as well. I want to put some of that colour in front of the bird as well to take up some of that negative space that's there. The paper's dry here where I'm working. I flicked my brush to create a few drips and splashes there. The background has dried and now I have my Da Vinci Maestro brush. This is a number five that I'm using. I want to paint the areas of grey feathers that I see on the reference photo and I want to work on damp paper so that my paint edges will be soft where the shadow finishes. So I've painted some water onto the paper and then while the paper's damp I use that grey paint that I mixed up from the three colours and I paint that onto the damp paper. You can see there's a shadow underneath the, the head and on the front of the neck there so that's what I'm painting in now. And I'll let the paint bleed with the water that's on the paper. I've just dropped some more paint in there. Watercolour paint always dries lighter. It looks fairly dark when it's wet. I use some of that grey around the eye as well. I've wet down the front of the bird and now I'm doing the same thing with the grey paint. I paint it on where I see the shadow and I let the paint bleed with the water that's on the paper. I just push it where I want it. As the mixed paint dries there may be some separation of colour and that for me is part of the beauty of watercolour. That never bothers me when my colours separate on the paper. I keep going all the way around to the bottom. So I've wet the paper here as well and I'm still using that grey that I mixed up. So just up the back here the shadow has hard edges so I can paint that on the dry paper. And you can see the paint starting to separate as it dries. And as I said, that's part of the beauty of painting in watercolour for me. There's a shadow here that I can paint on dry paper because it also has hard edges. It's a cast shadow, cast by the feather above it. So I look at the reference photo and I paint on roughly the same shape that I see. It doesn't matter if it varies slightly. And that shadow continues along under the wing feathers. So that's on dry paper as well because the shadow has the hard edges. There it is, it's dry now and I've painted in all those shadows that help to form the shape of the goose. Then I can use that grey paint to paint in those feathers that are on the neck. I paint those on dry paper. I paint the eye in with French Ultramarine and I've also washed a very pale wash of the orange over the top of the beak. Then I can start to paint on some darker orange onto the beak. And when I've got that top beak covered in, I can dab some deeper pigment onto it while it's damp. 
I paint in the bottom beak as well with the orange. I'm using an archival waterproof black ink pen to draw the pupil in. It was too small to fuss around with a brush so I thought I'd use the pen instead. I've mixed some alizarin crimson with some French ultramarine to make a burgundy colour and I can use that on the nostril and on the darker areas of the beak. I've wet this feather here with some water and now I've got some grey paint that I'm running along the bottom of it. Here I've wet the second feather and I'm running that paint along the edge of the feather that's on top. So that paint forms the shape of the feather above. I do the same thing here, I've wet this feather and I run the paint along and that paint forms the edge of the feather above. I'm still using the grey that I mixed but I've mixed a bit more of the warmer colours into it to warm it up. Now I can paint these wing feathers in. I'm painting these on dry paper and what I've done I've mixed the yellow and the red together to make an orange and I've put a tiny bit of blue into it to make this colour. And of course a fair amount of water to make it this pale. So it's a very pale orange with a touch of blue in it to grey it down. Here I'm wetting along the feather with some water and I'll paint some grey paint there. I wanted soft edges again so that's why I've wet the paper and I create those feather separations on the dry paper. I'm using a smaller Maestro brush now, this is a number two. Those feet get washed in with the same colour that I used on the beak, so that was alizarin crimson mixed with Indian yellow. And when the leg is dry I mix a bit more of the alizarin crimson into the mix and I can start to paint the shadow that I see on the neck. There I've just dropped a bit of French ultramarine onto that damp paint. So all I do is look at the reference photo and see where the darker colour is and that's where I paint this. The back leg is darker than the front leg because it's in the shadow so I'll use the darker orange mix on it first and then before that paint dries I'll drop in some French ultramarine and that will grey it down and cool it down and push it back further. So while that's wet I pick up a touch of French ultramarine on my brush and I drop that onto the wet paint. And that cools it down and pushes it back. Cool colours tend to recede whereas warm colours advance. So because that leg is further back I wanted it to look like it was further back so I cool it down with the blue. And I do the same thing on the toe that's there. I've just washed it in with the darker orange and now I'll drop in some French ultramarine. The shadow I'll paint in with the grey, I'll put more pigment near the foot and as it moves away from the foot I'll make the colour lighter by using more water on my brush. I demonstrate painting cast shadows in another video. Cast shadows are darker near their source and then as they move away they become lighter in colour. So I've got more pigment near the feet and then as it moves out there's more water on my brush and the shadow colour gets lighter. I also dropped a bit of the Indian yellow in there as well just for interest. 
One of the things I like about this Fabriano paper is that it's easy to lift colour once the paint has dried. I've got a synthetic flat brush here that's slightly damp with water and I can use it to pull a few of the highlights out of the shadow. So this is not a stiff scrubber brush, it's an ordinary synthetic brush that I use when I'm painting with acrylic paint. So using only three primary colours and a black ink pen for the pupil, there's my finished goose. The full length version of this tutorial will be available on my Patreon site as soon as I've finished making it. Patrons will have access to the line drawing, the reference photo and my finished painting. So as I said, if you're new to painting in watercolour, don't be tempted to go out and buy a whole range of colours at the beginning or you'll end up with a box full of paints that you never use. Start with some primary colours and practice mixing them first. Usually a warm and a cool yellow, red and blue is a good place to start. If you watched last week's video, you'll know that I practiced painting hair and I said that I'd like to try and paint my face as well. Well, I had a go, it's not great, but it's my first portrait painting. And last night I had a bit of a play with this one. It's not finished yet. This is my oldest son when he was a baby. He's 30 now, I think. So I'll keep practicing. Thanks for watching. I hope I gave you some useful information. Please give this video a like and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you next week with a new video. Happy painting. Artist quality. Artist quality. It's raining today. I've painted this goose where I've used three primary colours only. Today I want to show you how I painted this go goose. Oh, for goodness sakes. Goose. Artist quality watercolour paints. You've come up for a coffee, have you? Oh, wait. Okay, no, it's crooked. Still crooked. How do you say Fabriano Artistico? Fabriano artis Artistico. Let me practice. Fabriano Artistico. Fabri Fabriano Artistico. 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 Yeah. Fabriano Artis Ah, uh, do it again. Fabriano Artistico. Fabriano Artistico. Is that right? Yeah. Fabriano. Fabriano. What? Fabriano. Fabriano. Artistico. Artistico. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, where is this? Spirit? This is Fabriano Artistico. Yeah. Is that right? What is you want to say? That's the paper. Oh. That's the name of the paper. Yeah. Fabriano Artistico. Fabriano Artistico. Or Fabriano Artistico. Fabriano Artistico. <laughs>